Today I'm taking you with me to the middle of the Atlantic, in the Portuguese archipelago of the Azores. It is in this unspoiled European land, between collapsed volcanoes and black and white churches, that I will be investigating Portugal's best kept secret, the pineapple of San Miguel, Europe's only pineapple production, and possibly the sweetest pineapple in the world. The Azores consists of nine islands, with each having very distinctive identities and special features. They were among the first places colonized by Portugal at the beginning of the 15th century, and then they played an important role in the expansion of the Portuguese Empire. The archipelago greatly benefited from its unique geographical position as part of the shortest route to the Americas and close proximity to Africa. It quickly became an important supply and trade center. Its very fertile volcanic soil and ideal climate allowed for the development of export crops that enriched the islands, including wheat, oranges, and later on, pineapples. It was one of the many exotic fruits that found their way to the archipelago and the one that became most iconic and intertwined with the local culture. Currently, more than 90% of the production of pineapples is concentrated in the largest island of the archipelago, San Miguel, and in particular around its capital, Punta del Gad. Our quest actually begins here, at the heart of the Green Island, where I decided to go to the local market to get some local views on this mysterious fruit. Mercado da Graça, which is uh, the market in Ponta del Gada, the capital of the Azores, uh, which is well known because that's where you can find regional products. It is a very good starting point to try to discover what is the most representative product according to the locals. And so to do so, we'll just ask them uh, directly. So let's just check it out. Para você, o que é o produto mais representativo de São Miguel? Banana ou banana? Muito obrigado. So, para você, o que é o produto mais representativo de São Miguel? O ananás. É, é melhor e diferente dos outros? Sim, é melhor e a produção biológica e é mais doce. <laughs> Muito Beleza. obrigado. So, para você, o que é o produto de São Miguel que é mais representativo? O mais representativo de São Miguel, sem dúvida, é o queijo e o ananás. O ananás? Dois produtos diferentes, fazem parte da nossa gastronomia, que são muito bons. After talking to the local farmers, one thing was clear. The pineapple in San Miguel seemed to be special. It was the one product that kept coming back as being the most representative of the island. Locals would swear to me that it was the best in the world. To learn more about it, I went on a quest to find pineapple specialists. I was well motivated to unveil all the secrets of this mysterious fruit. the perfect place to ask questions about the uh, Azores pineapple. So it is here at uh, Aruda's plantation. It's quite well known in the region as like it's one of, it's quite an old plantation, like it has been, they have been growing pineapples there for close to a century now. Nowadays it's mostly a place where you learn about pineapples more than an actual uh, commercial plantation. They, they very nicely agreed to do an interview, so let's check it out.
Okay, my name is Nelson. I work here at the plantation. Uh, this plantation um, started in the early 20th century by Augusto Arruda. He was a lawyer. Uh, he used some family grounds to establish a new a new fruit uh, because this used to be a, a, a orange farm and with the plague that came to the Azores in the middle 19th century it destroyed all the orange farms so he transformed it in a, a pineapple farm he also was a visionary way ahead of his time and he thought that the Azores were a good place to tourists to 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 come and see so he opened the plantation so people could see how how the pineapple is planted he also founded Sata the, uh, the local airline company, uh, the Terra Nostra group in, Fru in Furna, so people could come to São Miguel and, and enjoy themselves. People in the Azores, the, the nobility uh, in the Azores, they had a tradition of having gardens with several exotic plants. And eventually the pineapple was brought here. Uh, during the, the destruction of the orange farms in the mid-19th 19th, 19th century, people uh, sought new um, cultures that were easy to, to sell to Europe because they didn't have any competition. So they tried the tea, they tried the, the tobacco, and they tried the pineapple. Uh, nobody had pineapples in a two-week trip, boat trip from Europe. And they experimented the way and the, and the best species to grow inside greenhouse in the Azores, and nowadays we have this pineapple, the cayenne type. In San Miguel, there are um, 99% of the greenhouses in the Azores right now are in San Miguel because of the ge geography of the island itself. The pineapple needs a, a lot of warmth, so uh, we have to recreate the warmth artificially, so we use greenhouses. But we, you have to have a place where you will have uh, natural uh, sunlight the, all year long. And in San Miguel we have bigger um, places, they are, called, they are called fajans, uh, playing ground by the sea with a lot of sun all year long. In, in this, in here in Fajan Baj, it's one of the best locations for that. It's one of those um, uh, traditional cultures that develop the areas where the pineapple is being planted. The people all around here in Fajan Baj, they work in pineapple or have half the family works on pineapple. So you define generations of people of people working in this industry. And the Azorean pineapple has many characteristics that make it stand out from your normal supermarket pineapple. It is the only commercial pineapple produced in Europe. It is totally organic. It has a unique culture and production methods. However, more than all of these, what makes it truly different is its special taste. It's a, it's a sweeter pineapple for uh, several reasons. First, uh, the way we prepare the soil so the plants can grow. It, it, uh, it gives a special flavor to it. We use uh, sawdust and natural occurring leaves uh, in, the, in the island. We uh, chop the leaves and we mix up with the sawdust and the ground. And it creates a very warm uh, soil so the plant can grow. Also, we manipulate the, the, um, the starch inside the fruit. We cut the top leaves of the plant and we cut also the leaves of the plant so the plant doesn't grow and starts putting that uh, starch, extra starch, inside the fruit. And with the heat inside of the greenhouse, that starch will transform to extra sugar. So it's really sweet, a very, very sweet pineapple during summertime. So what makes it like special is not so much the genetics, it's more like the, the, the method. The way, the method in, in, uh, that we produce, even the soil, the smoking, all of that contributes a little bit to the special flavor of this orange pineapple. The traditional methods of production of the Azorean pineapple are quite unique and really contribute to the product's premium taste. For this reason, Nelson guided me through the different greenhouses to show me the stages of production and explain to me the special techniques that have been developed in the Azores over more than a century to adapt this fruit to the island. In South America, the pineapple is it, it isn't its natural uh, environment. The, the, the plant is from there. Here, we try to recreate as much as possible the same conditions of temperature and humidity. Uh, here in the Azores, the pineapple takes between 18 and 24 months to be uh, fully grown and, 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 uh, and cut and collected from the plant. In, the, in South America, they take less. And in South America, they can uh, harvest more than one fruit for plant. And here we can only harvest one fruit per plant because uh, when we cut the leaves of the plant and, and um, the top parts of the fruit, we take out that growth strength of the plant so she won't give any more fruits, just one. 
we don't use any um, new methods of making the the, the, the the production more rentable. We use the same old methods. We collect the, the, the herbs between the pineapples by hand. Everything is made by hand. The greenhouses are the traditional uh, wood and, and, and glass greenhouses. Uh, we don't use any kind of pesticides or herbicides. We start. Uh, we always start with the root uh, of uh, of an old plant. After a plant giving a fruit, she will not grow any more fruit. So we take it out, cut the the, the roots, plant the root, and from the root it will grow between one and six new plants. Um, when the plants are about twenty centimeters high, we we transplant them into the, their final greenhouse. We prepare the soil, mixing up some sawdust and some uh, natural leaves uh, sliced. We mix it up with the, the ground and we plant the plants. Uh, to force the, um, the flowering of the, of the plants in the greenhouse so you can have pineapples growing in, in the greenhouse, we smoke the pineapple during nine days. We just burn some dry leaves, normally banana leaves, banana tree leaves, and it will force the, the, the flower to appear all over the greenhouse. Uh, because in their natural environment, the pineapples will grow and flower uh, at, at the same speed. But we have to be here, we, people had to, to make sure that all the greenhouses could be uh, collected at approximately the same time, so they have a workflow and a, a supply flow. So they accidentally discovered this was a, a method. When people were, were trying to, to, to ascertain what was the best soil, someone tried and built an oven beneath a greenhouse to it warm, so it could warm the soil. And in that of those greenhouses, smoke escaped. And people realized that all those greenhouses would flower at the same time. Okay. The Azorean pineapple has always been an export crop. By the late 19th century, it was actually the main exported product from the island of San Miguel. The main markets back then were the UK, Russia and Prussia. The production was affected by the stop of the international trade during the First World War, but managed to recover and reach a golden age during the interwar period. The Second World War, though, spelled the end of it. The impact of the war on the pineapple trade was much more devastating and long-lasting, and it led to the loss of key markets for the archipelago. Local producers tried to reach additional countries in the 1950s, like Sweden or Ireland, but without much success. The post-war period saw the start of a phase of decline for the pineapple production in the Azores, which became critical during the economic downturn which hit the region in the 1970s and early 1980s. The cost of cultivation and the time required to produce a fully ripe pineapple as well as cheaper competition, made it very hard for many smaller pineapple producers to remain operational. As a result, the Azorean pineapple production started to focus more and more on the domestic Portuguese market. As well as the US, where many people from Azorean origin move over the past two centuries. However, things started to change and look better in the last 10 years, with the advent of tourism. Usually the pineapple was sold and, and everybody produced the pineapple pointing at the Christmas time because in Portuguese mainland it's tradition to, to eat pineapple during Christmas. And by the way, it's the worst pineapple of the year. It's more acidic because you have less warmth inside the greenhouse. Uh, but with the advent of tourism, people start pointing the production during some, the hotter months so that people who visit the Azores could eat a very sweet and very good pineapple. Tourism brought lots of innovation in its wake. Locals thought about new ways they could decline the Azarin pineapple, which really enriched the local culture. Traditionally, sir, you only had like two products, the pineapple liqueur and the pineapple um, jam. But more recently, people are experimenting more with the pineapple and you start to, to appear pineapple cake and even in, even in uh, uh, more dishes, trying to introduce the pineapple as a, a good side dish or dessert. Now uh, there are people investigation how to use the leaves of the plant to make uh, some natural uh, f uh, furniture, for example, uh, using the fibers of the pineapple, so to trying to waste the less possible of this culture. The acquisition of the DOP status in 1996 is another element that contributed greatly to the renewal of the pineapple production in the Azores. This European designation really strengthened the brand name of uh, the Azorean pineapple 
and gave it a competitive advantage against pineapples coming from Central and South America, especially Costa Rica, where nowadays most of the pineapple imported in Europe come from. We have to follow a certain uh, amount of rules on planting, uh, irrigating and even catching the pineapple. Uh, in, from time to time, there are people inspecting all the plantations to make sure that all the plantations that have that DOP seal continue to harvest and plant the pineapples as it's uh, custom to do, as it is traditional. So it's, it's really tight, uh, by the way, the, the and it's good because you can, in that way, guarantee you have a good product at your table every time. Control of the quality of the pineapple, it's, it goes to the point to when you cut the pineapple to export, you cannot cut the green pineapple to export like the South American one. Uh, it, it will ripe, but it will not develop the, the sweetness and the traditional flavor. So it has to be at least uh, halfway uh, uh, yellowish or orange. Even that, it's very controlled. And it's better that way. But, so you can, you can ensure a quality product. Uh, in the big supermarkets that we, they are, exist all over the world, they, they try to, to buy the cheapest product. And effectively, the South American pineapple comes very, very cheap compared with the Zorian pineapple. But uh, we have the, the name, we have the, the, the quality mark of the Azorian pineapple. And that works for the Azorian pineapple a little bit. But yes, of course, it makes uh, a little bit of competition. But once people try this orange pineapple, they, they realize, okay, that's when it's more expensive, but uh, it's better, it's sweeter, it's, it has a different taste of it. Not saying that the, the South American pineapple is bad, but you, can see, you can see the difference between, the, between them and learn why. If the Azorean pineapple will most likely never reach again the same levels of production that it used to have at its peak, it has been able to find a niche that allowed it to survive and even thrive to this day. Nowadays, the pineapple industry in the Azores is going through a revival, thanks to tourism that comes in complement to the Portuguese market and the Azorean population living in the US. The future looks bright for this quality fruit, which is reinventing itself for new applications, such as jam, beer, yogurt, drinks, etc. Despite this new growing market and the financial aid from the European Union, the future is not yet guaranteed for this fantastic product due to the high cost of production, the fierce competition from African and South American pineapples. The production of pineapples in the island is on a slight decrease and the pandemic did not help with its harsh impact on tourism. However, I am convinced that the Azorean pineapple will find its way to new customers and a bright future. It is difficult to say if the Azorean pineapple is the sweetest in the world. Most likely it's among the sweetest. But this unusual taste, as well as a great back story, and the fact that it is one of the only organic production of pineapples in an industry which is relying very heavily on pesticide, makes it very appealing for consumers who are looking for more sustainability as well as quality. Of course, I could not finish this visit without asking Nelson a few practical tips regarding how to choose your pineapple. How do you know if the pineapple is ripe? Uh, <clears throat> first, um, it will start changing color from green or dark green to a yellow, then orange uh, color. Uh, during winter time, the more yellow or orange it is, the better it will be, uh, sweeter. Our, we recommend even to try to, to let it all become really, really, really orange. We cut it a little bit earlier, just so people have time to take it home when they visit us. During summertime, a, a pineapple with this color is perfectly good to eat. It's really, really sweet. Uh, also, another thing to look is the flatter the pineapple, the better. It means that all these little flowers that compose the, 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 the pineapple are fully mature and they have grown into, into a, a very sweet meat. Yes. Perfect. And so, like, you mentioned there is a difference between uh, summer pineapples and, like, winter pineapples. Uh, when is like the the best time the optimal time well, for people who like a little bit of more of an acidic fruit it's the winter pineapple because it doesn't have enough heat to transform all the starch and sugar 
Um, it's good like a, a side dish to meat, for example, for a barbecue. It's really good. If you like a, a more desserty pineapple, a more sweet pineapple, the summertime, uh, the pineapple is better. The one that is caught, uh, right, caught during summertime. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and that now you know how to choose a pineapple uh, fruit in the grocery store and no one like it's good or not and in any case I wanted to really thank Arados Plantation for allowing me to shoot here as well as answering all my questions but if you like big thumbs up, thumbs up for Nelson for like his patience and yeah that's about the end of the video so if you enjoy this content don't forget to subscribe and uh, I see you in the next one. Tschüss!